It's got to be said, Jeff Bridges is one cool dude. He's known for his laid back approach and his collaborative nature when working with others. And he's worked with Hollywood's finest in a range of roles that go from whimsical to psychopathic. He's also got a rock solid reputation in a town that can be quick to judge. And it looks like he's gotten through life pretty much with ease, charm and a great sense of humour. Jeffrey Leon Bridges was born in Los Angeles in 1949 to actor parents. He made his cinematic debut at just four months, being cuddled by Jane Greer in the film The Company She Keeps. As children, Jeff and his brother Beau were kept away from the Hollywood scene to keep them grounded. The Bridges family has a long heritage in Hollywood and their legacy exists to this day. Uh, my father, was in fact the first MC for the Hollywood Entertainment Museum. This is uh, back, I think, guess in the early uh, what mid '90s or something like that. And so uh, the Bridges have a history. His father's constant coaching and encouragement paved the way for what would become a long and prosperous career. But Jeff wasn't hooked straight away. Yeah, uh, nepotism, you know, getting your foot in the door as an actor is the toughest thing. And as I was saying tonight, my dad loved showbiz so much and he wanted to turn his kids on to it. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm so glad that, uh, that he did. And it took a while. I, I had to, I maybe made uh, 10 films before I decided, uh, oh yeah, I guess, I'll, I guess I'll go this way and, you know, do it. And I'm so glad I listened to him and uh, thank you, Dad. Thank you, Mama. And he was off. He received his first Oscar nomination in 1972 for his coming of age role in The Last Picture Show. This set the tone for the types of roles Jeff would master. Rambling, reckless and unpredictable characters. He was nominated in the same category again in 1975, playing Clint Eastwood's sidekick in Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. And received his third Oscar nomination in 1985 for Starman. With an impressive array of characters and award acknowledgements under his belt, you'd be forgiven for assuming Bridges had turned into a huge star. But he hadn't. This was a time where De Niro and Pacino-like intensity was preferred to Jeff's trademark coolness. In fact, Jeff was so well known for his laid-back approach that the Coen brothers actually based the character of the dude in The Big Lebowski on Bridges, undoubtedly one of his most memorable characters. Even in 2008, he pulled out a few elements of the dude for his magazine executive character, Clayton Harding, in How to Lose Friends and Alienate People. I mean, I guess I played, uh, you know, kind of executive types uh, before, you know, from uh, Tucker to uh, the president, you know, and the contender and these kinds of things, and kind of mixed with some, uh, some of that, uh, you know, uh, bolder, uh, more uh, uh, funky is the word that's popping into my mind. I got a little, got a little dude injected in, in there too, you know. And I think that's all part of Clayton's character. Jeff's characters are so rich that it may surprise you to find out he actually refers to himself as a pretty lazy guy, saying it's easier for him to turn down a role than to take it on, mainly because of the amount of commitment he pours into a character once he decides to engage with the project. Stick It was another film he poured himself into, heart and soul. I met with Jessica Bendinger, the writer and director, and uh, she taught me about the world of gymnastics, which I didn't really know too much about, and I was able to go to one of the, uh, the national meets, and uh, it was rather peculiar, I would imagine, people seeing me there, because uh, there's all this wonderful flipping and tumbling going on, and I'm there with my video camera, videoing coaches. <laughs> totally turned away from the action. I don't know what they thought. Jeff makes a point of playing different roles one after the other, and he credits this strategy for avoiding typecasting. In 2003, he took on Seabiscuit, a film about America's equivalent to Farlap. Jeff was no stranger to horses and took to his role like a duck to water. I own a horse. We have a ranch up in Montana, so I ride myself. I was, I was another big plus uh, 
reading the script. And I said, oh, hey, I get to ride. Mm, that's pretty good. I thought I, you know, I knew I wasn't going to be the jockey, but the owner gets to ride, so that was a lot of fun. Bridges is also a cartoonist, a photographer, a talented musician, and widely known for his more liberal political views. In 2007, he was open about his views on nudity in the film The Amateurs. You know, sex is such a, an important part of all of our lives, and it's tough. It's really a challenge for filmmakers, I think, to to address it. You know, you, uh, you normally when I see a, a love scene in a movie, it kind of pulls me out of the movie a little bit. I'm thinking, oh, those actors, are they really kids? They, 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 they do that shot where they follow the skin and kind of... Uh, Rarely do, uh, are filmmakers able to really, really address it with any kind of uh, uh, reality, really. And in this movie, sex is, uh, we engage the audience in sort of a humor, the humorous aspects of sexuality. We get to laugh at uh, ourselves, basically, the, you know, because sex, there's a sort of funny stuff about sex, too. Yeah. In 2009, he reprised his hippie persona in The Men Who Stare at Goats, a movie about an acid-loving Vietnam vet who's convinced the government that, given the right mental training, soldiers and spies could transcend normal limits, astrally travelling behind enemy lines and killing with a glance. Well, the group that they had assembled was, you know, so wonderful. That uh, immediately caught my attention, but uh, I was in the middle of making another movie when George approached me on this, and uh, I'm usually very concentrated on what I'm doing, and I found it kind of a, you know a distraction. That, you know, but once he started to, once he started to <laughs> work with us, George, work with us. Once he started to pitch it, the story was so intriguing that uh, I had to jump on board. You know, it was so unusual. Bridges' next picture would arguably be one of the most significant of his career. Crazy Heart was shot in just 24 days on a tiny budget. Now, incredibly, the movie failed to impress its producers and at one stage was going to go straight to cable TV. Well, luckily for us, it hit the big screen and this movie saw Bridges earn a Golden Globe, get his fifth Oscar nomination and receive a heartfelt tribute from his Baker Boys co-star, Michelle Pfeiffer. You know, movie stars often get risk averse because, well, the failures are so public. But Jeff willingly walks the plank every time he steps foot on a set. And as a result, he has never lost his joy of acting and his characters still sizzle with the same passion he had 40 years ago. Nobody works harder. He has never given a lazy performance and somehow always makes it look effortless. His work in Crazy Heart is yet another performance that inspires other actors to raise the standards for themselves. Interestingly, he didn't jump on the script straight away. It was only after Grammy-winning producer T-Bone Burnett came on board that Bridges signed on. Ran to T-Bone and he was saying, uh, well, what about the script Crazy Heart? And I said, uh, why, are you interested in it? And he, he said, yeah, I'll do it if you do it. And I said, you're kidding me, come on, let's go. And uh, off we went and, and uh, had this great experience making this, this wonderful movie. And in 2010, Jeff Bridges won his first Oscar for Best Actor. He thanked his wife and children and raised his award up to heaven as he thanked his mother and father for, quote, turning him onto such a groovy profession. I was expecting to, you know, hang out with my friends, feel good. What I didn't expect was the emotion that kind of welled up in me when I kind of got that reception that I got there and felt all that... That, uh, that love and appreciation coming, it was really a wonderful feeling. And he's now set to enjoy all the perks and benefits that little gold statue brings. Jeff Bridges is one of the few actors to enjoy enduring popularity with moviegoers, as well as maintaining the respect of movie critics. He has proven that he can roll with the best of them and still remain one cool dude. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. 
broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better on screen and at mnc.tv.